What kind of mindset do you have in your engineering career and how is it affecting your results? In today's episode, I'm going to be joined by Jeff Perry, the founder of More Than Engineering, a leadership and career coach for engineers. And Jeff is going to talk all about different mindsets and how they will affect your results, both in your career and your life. And Jeff is also going to be taking over as host of the Engineering Career Coach podcast going forward. So we're going to get into all of that. We're going to give you some real steps that you can take to improve your mindset and improve your career. Let's do it. All right, now I'd like to welcome our guest onto the podcast today. Jeff Perry. Jeff is the founder of More Than Engineering. He's a leadership and career coach for engineers. And Jeff, welcome to the Engineering Career Coach Podcast. Thanks, Anthony. Glad to be here. So as I mentioned to all of you earlier on, Jeff's going to be coming a host of the show. We're excited to have him and we'll get into that with him a little bit later on. I'm really excited about that. But first of all, Jeff, let's talk a little bit about what you do today on a daily basis, because it's different than what a lot of engineers do in the engineering side of things. Yeah, totally. So as you mentioned, Anthony, I, I do leadership and career coaching for engineers and tech workers. My personal background technically is in mechanical engineering. I did software development for a number of years and then manufacturing process improvement as well. So those are kind of the industries and the technology engineers that I focus on in my coaching work but I've worked with people in many different industries. Um, So it really comes down to helping other people reach their goals, right? So sometimes that's working with people, engineers who are trying to work on getting a promotion or being more effective in a new leadership role that they're in or trying to make a job transition to something that maybe is more fulfilling or aligned with where they wanna go in their careers. So I really love starting from the foundation of helping people get clarity on the values that they care about, the motivations they have for their career and where they want to go uh, so that they're building careers based on positivity and authenticity. So I do this in a lot of different ways, one-on-one coaching primarily right now and have done some group coaching work and uh, just am in the process of launching a new course on career development as well. That's great. And, and was it something for you in your career that pushed you in this direction? Or was it just something that you wanted to do? How did you kind of make that transition? Yeah, totally. So it really started with a lot of the things that we're going to talk about here today based on mindsets. And I had opportunities when I was in my corporate career, where in addition to my technical work, I got opportunities to do a lot of coaching and training inside of my companies and, and developing programs to help teams work more effectively, doing some one-on-one coaching with with leaders and others. And that kind of unlocked a piece of me that I found that I just love doing that work more than anything else that I did, even technically. I love de- delivering and, and designing technical innovation stuff, and, and that was uh, a lot of fun for me. Process improvement I loved and looking at the data and, and improving things. But what really came down to is where I found my most joy at work was when I could really feel like I was helping develop other people. And so now I like to say that I develop people rather than develop products and and systems now. That's great. And and you mentioned mindset. So let's transition into that. That's what we want to talk about today. You believe, Jeff, that mindsets are the key to career and personal growth. How do you define mindsets? Yeah. So kind of going back to my story, I'm not exaggerating when I say that coming to learn about mindsets over the last few years has really changed my life. And it was really working with other consultants, uh, teaching mindset-based leadership principles that really unlocked this love of teaching and training and coaching that really led me to doing what I'm doing right now. So what mindsets are, um, and the principles of mindsets have kind of grown in popularity and awareness over the years. Um, and you could define them in a number of different ways. There are a couple of analogies that I really like to use when I describe them. So one way I would describe mindsets is it's kind of like the lenses through which we see the world and the people around us. So if you think about having glasses or contacts, if you were to have a prescription that is not correct, then it could take even a beautiful scene that you could see if you're out in nature or something like that, and it could distort it and make, you, make it unclear. Um, or if the lenses were scratched or something too. 
Um, and so this is like a bad mindset or a negative mindset that can distort how we see the people, the challenges and the opportunities that we face in our lives. Conversely, having a clear lens with a right prescription that's crafted just for us allows us to be able to see clearly what we are faced with and move through it more effectively. So that's one analogy that I, that I like to use is kind of those lenses. Another analogy could be thinking of like a computer operating system almost. Like computers and their software are constantly getting inputs from us and, and then things are output. And something as simple as typing in a letter on your keyboard, if I type the letter A, then I expect my word processor or something to put out A. But if there's a virus in the computer or in the system or in the software, that can turn even a good input, something, you know, good data that goes into a software, and it could turn it into a bad output, something that's incorrect or untrue because of the virus that's there. And that's like a bad mindset. Whereas having good mindsets means that good inputs equal good outputs, bad inputs equal bad outputs. We're getting the truth about that. So positive mindsets really help us see and experience the truth about ourselves and the world and bind and bad mindsets distort what we see and even encourage us to sometimes deceive ourselves in different ways. Interesting and, and really good analogies, I think, to help kind of, you know, wrap your head around, you know, what that word means and how it can certainly help or, or hurt your efforts on a, on a regular basis. And let's talk about that a little bit kind of next here. How can mindsets, Jeff, fuel behavior or, and which, you know, ultimately, of course, your behavior fuels your results. So really the mindsets are fueling or, or tying to results. Talk about a little bit how those mindsets then, you know, can get spilled over into your career and your life. Yeah. So what we believe, you know, our mindsets really drive what we do and what we then do drives the results and the consequences that we get in life. So, but my, but mindsets are really at the foundation of that. So the, to use a visual to think of like a, a pyramid that has three sections where you've got the mindsets as the foundation, the base, and then that's the foundation for the actions and the behaviors that we take, which leads then to the results that we get in life. So often in our lives, we're trying to change something or maybe reach a new goal that we have or something like that. And so we're trying to shift our results from you know, what we currently have to a new objective, right? And the common way that individuals or often organizations go about trying to make that change is starting to prescribe all of the things that we need to do differently. So we talk about new processes, new habits, new skills that we need to have. And those are all important things to do. But if we neglect also to work on our mindsets, what we believe, right, then um, how we and how we need to think differently, then we're going to shift those behaviors, but our mindsets are going to be back where they were, kind of wanting to maintain, maintain the status quo. They get left behind. And often that's gonna pull us back our actual behaviors that we've said, hey, these are all the new things we need to do to meet our new goal. Well, if we neglect our mindsets, our mindsets are gonna pull us right back to where we were before. So if we can actually first shift and work on our mindsets, what we believe and think, then our new actions and behaviors are gonna be shifted with that mindset on a more solid foundation. And we're gonna be much more sustainable to reach those new goals that we have. Yeah, that's, that's very powerful when you think through that. And I have a kind of a personal story or example of that as well. I think I mentioned this on the podcast before, but I, I read the book a while ago called Zen and the Art of Happiness, which is by a guy named Chris Prentice, which is a really good book. And he mentions in it, you know, one of the key philosophies of Zen is everything that happens to you is the best possible thing that can happen to you. And basically, when I read that book, I started to adopt that philosophy a little bit. And what it does is it, whenever something happened to me, even though many people might've seen it as quote unquote bad, my outlook was, well, this happened to me for something, some positive reason, what can I draw from that? And that's what I've been able to do. And I think that some, what that has done for me actually, in some, what may have looked like bad situations, even for EMI, we'd be able to create big opportunities out of those situations. And so it really speaks to Jeff's, what Jeff's saying about mindsets is that the mindset that you have will dictate your outcomes and your results. Because if I didn't have that mindset, I wouldn't have looked for some of the opportunities in these not so good situations. And so, you know, keep that in mind when you create kind of a philosophy, whether it's a life or a career philosophy that's driven by your mindsets, 
it's going to dictate your actions or your responses to the things that happen to you. And that really means everything. I mean, cut and dry, it fuels your results, as Jeff said. Um, so let's, let's go there next, Jeff. What are some of the different places where mindsets might play out? Yeah, so really it's everywhere, Anthony. Think about in work, if we're going through a job search, if we have you know, personal life challenges, interactions with, with people, personal relations at home, it's, it's really everywhere. So just to give a few examples, um, when I worked in my corporate job, we were constantly updating and adjusting internal processes, right? We're trying to improve things. And sometimes when new changes were presented, especially if I was part of uh, presenting and the idea, then I would agree with those changes. But sometimes there were changes that were brought to me that I didn't agree with. And whether or not I initially agreed, there's a huge difference in how effective it was for me and my team based on how I approached that situation. Uh, and that's especially if I disagreed, right? So if I agreed, it was pretty easy. I was on board and I tried to do everything I could to get others on board and make it as successful as possible. But when I disagreed, I could either dig my heels in and try and convince people that what we were doing was wrong and that I was right, or I could, or take the opposite approach and really seek to understand the issue better, understand why we were making this change, what was necessary and why people had come to that, come to that decision. And I could decide that even if I didn't agree, what was best for the company was for me to work to make the change successful. And obviously I exhibited both of those uh, spectrums in, in my career um, in either helping things go forward or, or trying to dig my heels in. Um, for people who, uh, and there are a lot nowadays because of uh, large unemployment these days, uh, who are in a job or out of a job or in a job transition, uh, they can often look at every no that they might get when applying or trying to network with people as a failure or a direct knock on who they are as a person and, and their personal worth. And it kind of goes to what you were seeing, the challenges that you face at EMI or in your career. Um, this could be a negative mindset that sometimes if you, you could dive too deep into that and really take that heavy upon ourselves and just get discouraged by those challenges, right? But if instead they can look for each one of those setbacks as an opportunity, as you said, to learn and grow, then that changes things, that helps them keep getting better and improving through each interaction, each opportunity, rather than getting more discouraged. And that's true of just about any challenge that we face in life, right? Thinking about also in a more personal situation, personal interactions, mindsets can really fuel how we see other people. And we can get into this more later, but thinking about for me, do I see people in my life, certainly in my home, my wife and my kids, uh, or, or at work, as just objects that I can get something out of, right? Because I need them to do something for me, or maybe I see them as an object that they're in my way, they're an obstacle in my way, you know, and so I get really discouraged and resentful about them. Or can I see other people not as objects, but as people that matter like I matter, and I can care deeply that they have needs and challenges just like I do, and I can take that into account as I interact with them. So truly our mindsets can really fuel everything we do, which is why it's such an important lifelong pursuit to continue to develop these more positive mindsets throughout our lives. That's great. And just to go a little bit deeper on that, to give some kind of more examples, maybe you could talk a little bit about mindset pairs. Yeah, so one of the things about mindsets is that we can put them into pairs or, or couples that that we can then rate ourselves on a scale if we were doing like a mindset assessment or something like that. And, and it's, you could say, you know, one to 10 or think about it as a continuum. And it's very different from kind of classic personality tests that kind of declare to us that this is who we are. And so you have to adjust your life given, you know, what the test says. I don't buy that so much from the personality test standpoint anymore. I, I kind of used to, but if you take a mindset assessment, then what you get is a score of where you're at now. It's kind of like a snapshot, but what you hope that it does is that it gives you an understanding of where you can continue to grow and change. It's a moment in time, and then you can take actions to improve. 
And so usually you're doing this in terms of these mindset pairs. Um, and there are a lot out there that we could talk about. Recently, I connected with a researcher and a consultant named Ryan Gottfriedson, who he put together a group of four mindset pairs that I think are pretty comprehensive that we can kind of talk through. And each one of these we could talk about in more depth, but I'll just give a quick overview here. So the first is probably the most well-known, and that's the growth mindset versus a fixed mindset. And this is made popular by a viral TED Talk and a related book on mindset given by Carol Dweck. And this is really about if we view our own and other people in our lives, our ability to continue to grow and develop, or do we think that we have fixed traits of our talents, our abilities, our IQ perhaps, that we really can't break, break out of, right? And so obviously taking a growth mindset and believing that we can continue to grow and improve is much more positive and it helps us believe that we can improve with focused effort and hard work. And so that's just one, the, the growth versus the fixed mindset. The next mindset pair is having an open mindset versus a closed mindset. So it's kind of the degree to which we are open to new ideas and suggestions in our lives. So asking, are we actually open to feedback even if it's critical for ourselves or do we always just look for and seek for information that confirms our beliefs and only kind of hear what we wanna hear? And do we care more about who is right or what is right? And that's kind of a big distinction there. So those who have open mindsets are always seeking to find what the truth is rather than be the authority themselves in the room. And they invite open communication from others. And they can even go so far as to see disagreement as being a really helpful thing for them, right? So the third one we'll talk about is the promotion versus a prevention mindset. And this one, can really think about where do our fears come from? Are we fear driven? Because um, someone with a prevention mindset really has a large fear of having problems and having people see their problems, making mistakes or experiencing discomfort in their lives. So they're committed to avoiding those problems and that discomfort. Um, and they wanna play it safe. And this can turn into a lot of other negative things that can, act, that can actually cause more problems like micromanaging or being quick to reprimand others if, if they're leaders. And uh, while conversely, someone with a promotion mindset is seeking to reach more. They're trying to make more progress. They're trying to be aggressive with their goals. And they're really more focused on what they can achieve and fulfilling their purpose rather than preventing loss and pain. And so thus they're not trying to avoid problems, but they're actually thinking through and anticipating and preparing for them and they're also willing to take more risks to meet their goals, right? And finally, the fourth mindset pair that I'll talk about is the inward versus the outward mindset, which this was kind of the first pair that I was really introduced to, at least in a big way. And it comes from research and work done by a group called the Arbinger Institute, a boutique consulting firm out of Utah. But this, um, this is a big one in human relations uh, for example, we can think, perhaps you can think about a time when you failed to, when you're driving, you failed to let someone into your driving lane, even though they had their blinker on. Maybe you failed to, you're working on a work project and you didn't really pull your weight in the team, uh, failed to really give support to someone who you knew needed some help from you and you had the ability to do so, but then didn't do it. Or if uh, it failed to do something kind for maybe a family member in your personal life, but when it would have been something that you could have easily done. And these are all examples, and we all have these examples in our lives of having an inward mindset, and it's a self-focused approach to life. Um, when we're inward, we see other people as objects, and we can do this in a few ways. We can see them as vehicles in our lives to kind of help us get something done. We can see them as obstacles in our way who, we need to move or we can see them as just truly irrelevant. We just don't care about them. So that's the inward mindset, whereas opposed to an outward mindset suggests that we should see people as people who matter like we matter. And we should be more focused on the success of the group and 
the organization, perhaps in a work setting, um, than just focus on ourselves and our own success, right? And so I like to think of this as living even beyond the classic golden rule of treating others the way that you want to be treated. And I've heard it called the, the platinum rule, which is to treat others the way that they want to be treated. And this means that we actually need to care about what others want and care about, you know, seeing them and what uh, their goals and challenges are. So obviously I've talked for quite a while, but we could talk about each one of these for days. Uh, but this is just a quick summary of each one of those mindset pairs. No, that's great. And you got the growth versus fix, the promotion versus prevention, open versus closed, inward versus outward. And I know they can all be relevant to different people in different ways. For sure, the growth versus fix, that Carol Dweck book, Mindset, this The New Psychology of Success is a wonderful book. If you want to dig deeper into that, that's really, really opened my eyes when I read it in terms of you know, a growth mindset. And she gives all kinds of examples with children and other things that really make you kind of think about it, which was great. And I think all of those different mindset pairs that you talked about, can people can kind of connect with them in different aspects of their lives for sure. And I think another one that I kind of thought of while you were talking about it, that I think is a good example to give is even from a sports perspective, you can either go to win the game or try not to lose the game, right? So if you're trying to win the game, you're really trying to score, you're trying to push, you know, push the game forward. If you're not, if you're maybe, maybe it's fear-based, you think this other team is really good and you just want to try not to lose the game. So you're really playing it safe. And, and again, that can also cross over to your career and, and Jeff gave some career options, but there's things you can do where you're saying, eh, I just want to take it easy here and coast a little bit, or I want to go and then get promoted and do a bunch of things here. So definitely think about how some of these mindsets might connect to you and your career and your life, and maybe how you can switch from one to the other and actually see some results in doing that. I think that could be that could be really, really important. So let's try to bring this back a little bit to the listeners, Jeff, in terms of, you know, how can these mindsets help engineering professionals to get unstuck from limiting beliefs or negative stereotypes? How can maybe they utilize some of these? Yeah, great question. So actually, that's one of the reasons why I got into coaching engineers. Obviously, that's my background, but I see engineers all the time falling into these stereotypes, these limiting beliefs that can really be crippling when we're trying to make progress in our lives. So I think in particular, we talked about the growth mindset when talking about this, like, do we really believe that we have the capacity to grow and develop skills? Or do we think that we're fixed and don't have this ability to change? So just one example, many technical professionals and engineers buy into this myth that they're really good technically, but they're not good communicators or that they're book smart, but not street smart. I mean, I heard that all the time because I, I had a natural ability with math and science stuff. And that kind of led me to an engineering career early on, but I kind of bought into this stereotype of what an engineer meant or what a what a math kid was or something like that right and i and i see that with a lot of people but who said that these things have to be exclusive right that why can't i be good technically but also be a good communicator and that you know those things don't have to be exclusive um, so often this connects with the belief that many engineers are introverts. There are all sorts of jokes about engineers about being introverts. Um, and uh, whether or not that is true, that the majority of them are introverts is completely irrelevant because introverts can actually be fabulous communicators. But beyond talking about communication activities, like starting to talk about uh, active listening and other things, we first need to convince an engineer at his or her core that they can actually grow in this trait and they can change their mindset. And if they can believe that, then any action we take to develop the skill they have in our, their lives will be enhanced. So if we're talking about communication, if we can work on the mindset and really believe that they can grow and develop that, then like we said, any actions or behaviors to actually grow that skill is gonna be a lot more effective for them. Yeah, that's great. And I really like that example because I, it's true a lot of, engineers or technical professionals get kind of classified into this not so good communicator category and they tend to accept it because it is what it is. And I mean, I'm living proof of that. When I started doing speaking, I, I was just awful. I was just not a good speaker in public and I spoke really fast and it wasn't easy for people 
to understand me, but I just kind of kept plugging away at it and kept practicing and gotten better. So now I often tell engineers that that's a skill you can improve, but really going to what Jeff said, whether or not you try to improve it often comes back to your mindset. Like, did you think you could improve it or did you think that you couldn't? And that's going to dictate the steps that you take. So that's, so that's great stuff. So we're going to come back in our take action today segment in a minute and get back into this mindsets and wrap it up on how you can maybe take action on thinking about your mindsets. But before we do that, Jeff, I did mention earlier on in the show that you're going to be taking over as host of the engineering career coach podcast. And we're really happy, happy to have you do that. And I just wanted to maybe ask you about that and kind of, you know, what your goal may be for taking over the show and what you hope to be able to do as host of the podcast going forward. Yeah, so I'm really excited about this, and I appreciate uh, you giving me this opportunity to do that. Um, I mean, I really want to help inspire engineers and just kind of along the lines of the whole goal of why you started EMI as well and, and the podcast as well, to really reach higher and be their best selves. I truly believe the engineering work of all kinds is going to be a huge driver of innovation in our society and economic growth worldwide. And if I can be a small part in helping engineers be their best selves, and thus deliver more great innovations, then I think that's a win. And I hope, also hope that we can continue to grow the audience of the podcast. Um, I know, Anthony, your biggest uh, industry connections and, and most of your audience right now is a large influence with civil engineering and related fields based on your background. Uh, but I hope that we can also increase the reach to other industries as well, even more some of the industries that are also already listening in, but growing with some of my experience, more of these software and electrical engineers, that uh, you know these industries are gonna be a huge part of how technology continues to change in the coming years. And you know they need to be their best as we continue to grow in those technologies. And, and really, I'm just excited for the opportunity to keep growing myself as well with the people that I'll interview and learning from them. And so uh, excited to, to continue on with it. Yeah, that's great. And I, and I, you know, I've always had, you know, so he's been a, a place in my heart for the engineering career coach podcast. We have five or six podcasts now. I'm, I'm losing track a bit, but this was the first one always. And um, I started this in the beginning to really serve all engineering and technical professionals. And we did start some more niche podcasts in the civil and other things and that, and all that's growing. But I do think that there's, there are a lot of really good personal and professional development topics that can be distributed amongst all engineering and technical professionals. And that's why I really feel that there's a place for this podcast. And while I haven't been able to contribute as much anymore with our training, that's been growing, having someone like Jeff, who's been doing a lot of great stuff for engineers to come on and kind of take it and run with it. And him and I are going to work in the background on guests and, and other ideas that we're still going to bring to the table. And I'm just excited about that all together. So with that, we're going to take a quick break. I'm going to come back with Jeff in a minute. We're going to wrap this one up with our Take Action Today segment and give you some pointers on how you can kind of think more about the mindsets that we've talked about here today. We'll be right back. All right, we're back with Jeff Perry, founder of More Than Engineering. Jeff's a leadership and career coach for engineers, and he'll be taking over as a host of this podcast going forward, which we're excited about. And Jeff, we talked a lot about mindsets today and talked a lot about these different mindset pairs. And what we want to do here is give our listeners something to take action on based on what we've talked about here. What's something that you can kind of give them as they step away from this podcast and go back to their everyday actions? Yeah, great. So I think it can all be kind of put together with just choosing one of these mindset pairs. Anyone that, if there's anyone that resonated or, or someone felt like, hey, I feel like I need to work on that. And just a quick review, that was growth versus fixed mindset. That was open versus closed. That was promotion versus prevention or outward versus inward mindsets. Any one of those that someone feels like they could work on, then just choose one and take some action. And obviously the growth and the development of mindsets, it's a lifelong pursuit, but if we can just move the needle, even just a little bit, make small progress, that can mean big results or big changes in our lives and in our relationships and in our work output. And so just to leave with a little quote about this is that who you are today 
doesn't mean, or who you are today doesn't have to be who you are tomorrow. So we can continue to grow and change. Wherever you're at today is irrelevant, but you need to continue to just focus on how can I just get a little bit better each day and be a little bit better tomorrow than I was today in growing these mindsets. That's great. And, and that's what we really want you to think about. Do you maybe have a fixed mindset and you can do some things to push it to a growth mindset? And then that would make big changes for you because as we said, these mindsets are tied to your actions and the results that you get. So that's kind of what we want to kind of leave you with here today. And of course, you'll be hearing more from Jeff as he comes on as the host of the Engineering Career Coach podcast. And in the meantime, Jeff, where can our listeners kind of find you and keep up to date with some of the things you are doing? Yeah, so I'm reasonably active on LinkedIn. Always welcome to connect with people there. You can find me if you just look up Jeff Perry or More Than Engineering. Uh, my main website is morethan-engineering.com. And the course that I'm just starting to launch for people who are working on career transitions is called the Engineering Career Accelerator. So people can check that out at engineeringcareeraccelerator.com. All right, great. So Jeff, thanks so much for coming on the podcast today. And we really look forward to having you as the host going forward. Thanks, Anthony. I look forward to it. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Please leave your comments and or questions in the comments section below this video. Also, if you'd like to view the full show notes for this episode, visit engineeringmanagementinstitute.org or see the link in the video description. There you will find the key points discussed in today's episode, as well as links to any of the resources, websites, or books mentioned during the episode. Until next time, I wish you the best in all of your engineering career endeavors.